the best Macca's burgers ever. Bryce, you okay? Yeah. You sure? I'm hanging out. Are you sure? I'm chilling. I just feel like we've both picked up on a vibe. A vi- what, what's the vibe? Do you think he's okay? He's normally positive Paul. I'm, am I not positive Paul? I don't know what's going on. You okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, just make it sure. Look, we're all just friends here. I had Macca's <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> Did oh, you? Yeah, okay. What's your brekkie what, order? Where'd you go? Oh, um, I got this almost every day. Uh, we because we got to the airport yeah. together last split. I get you go double bacon and egg or sausage and egg muffin. You don't go the bacon. That's like a little extra. You know, it's, it's breaking it's break the back. No, no, like two. Two. One in a meal with a hash brown no, and a I, coffee. Th- that's why I'm saying double. Yeah, yeah, but then you get a second little burgie. Yeah, okay. They have bought the mighty muffin back. What's the mighty muffin? It has. I don't know what the mighty. Oh, hash brown. No, uh, it has like bacon, egg, sausage, uh, and tomato sauce and cheese. There so it's go. just like all of them smashed together with tomato sauce. I just go hotcakes. Tomato sauce Ooh, is you're a hot cake. I love the hotcakes. Ooh, four, nice. four things of hotcakes, pack them in one thing, drown them in sauce. Four things of hotcakes. Look, look. That's a lot of hotcakes. There's a, a lot of new boy. You're a growing boy. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> you're literally made of hotcakes. I'm <laughs> more hotcake than man. Uh, what else am I? I'm wanting your Twitch emotes. That's what else I'm wanting. I'm wanting you to send in your Twitch emotes so you can play. Nick plays a league with us this afternoon. Uh, send in your Twitch emotes uh, to Twitter, to Instagram. I assume Facebook as well. It says Twitter on there. You, you, just send them to any of the social channels. Send them uh, to Nick. Send them to me. Send them to Bryce because he's not even on there. He <laughs> needs some love. Unless that's Bryce on the bottom left. It's hard to I'm just Gragas. Yeah. You're the wrong guy, bro. Are you okay? <laughs> uh, Gragas has some really deep-seated issues. He really they're, does. They're coming to the forefront. Uh, but you have been playing a lot of Team Fight Tactics. Yeah, I have. I a sat, ton. I was committed. I woke up, so it wasn't even... I forgot that it was being released on the... I think it was the 18th. Mm. And I was like, I'm sick of wasting my mornings. I'm going to set my alarm to like 8.39. And I got up. What time do you normally get up? Uh, I mean, if I'm not doing anything, like it kind of just depends what time I go to bed. I try like... I feel like getting out of, getting out of bed after 10, you've wasted your morning. <laughs> Uh, yep. But like, also, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a child, so I can afford to like yeah. seven a.m. wake Close. up is like early. Yeah. Whereas I'm pretty sure you guys starting at the old five is like a standard occurrence. No, see the thing is, before we get into TFT, yeah, yeah we've really segued. Jasper, <laughs> Jasper is a great sleeper. Yeah. So Jasper goes to bed at seven p.m. at the latest every day. Wakes up at nine a.m. Yep. Every morning. Never cries at night. He wakes up at nine. Yeah, That's he so wakes at sleep. nine in the, the morning. The other day, he woke up at ten fifteen, and Jenna and I are both laying in bed, and we're like, we don't want to check, because what happens if he's just, you know, he's gone? If someone just took him. <laughs> so like the baby monitor's on it. There's like kind of a shadow in the corner, but he was just. You yeah, walk in and there's just 10. like dust drifting away <laughs> at, the top, at the top of the cot. Mm. Um, all right, they've got nice and dark. Team fight tactics though. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's really good. I'm having fun. I haven't played any of the auto battlers, yep. and I came in and I won three of my first four games, mm-hmm. and I thought I was just the sickest guy in the world. I'm just like, I'm actually popping. I'm so good at this. What do you play? I played glacial. Uh, I RNG like, right now. I RNG like triple like like tier three brawn like really early in the game, mm-hmm. and I'm just like sitting there just flexing on kids with my brawn whacking. You them would the be the brawn player. You yeah. loved playing brawn in no, and then, professional league, didn't you, bro? Yeah, uh, no. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, now I'm just getting hard boomed because everybody who's actually like mildly good at the game is like just has Figured infinite more synergies. But I realized I was tunneling so hard, and that's my problem now. I was tunneling on like getting the tier three stacks. Oh, so you, you were like re-rolling a lot and digging. Yeah, and just, like, I'm, yeah, I'm just like on... I need the last Cassidin. Yeah, I've just I, I've somehow randomly we were playing like mega in houses with Jake and Rusty yeah. and stuff, mm. and uh, <laughs> I started like three games in a row with a static shiv Cassidin, just whacking people in the head. Because I feel like that is part of the key of these kind of games is that. It, it feels like it's it's pushing you towards the idea of like, oh, you want to level up all you guys to the max thing. But mm. really, like most of the time, the most efficient play is actually like get a good synergy going between a few yeah, different yeah, yeah. things and just be like, be able to change your strategy on the fly as yeah. opposed to just like dedicating to this one build. See, what I thought it was to get Draven and Kale in the same game and just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you been having fun? Uh, yeah. It's, it's like, so I'm real picky. Like I'll come out and say it. I'm an auto battler snob. Yep. Like I, I have suggested some things that I would like to see improved in the game. Yep. But I think overall, Morel and Omicron Garen reignited that was a me special. Reignited my love for it. I I saw Bryce run Morel and Omicron Garen. Mm. I got a level three Garen. I got a Morel and Omicron. <laughs> it's so, that was really fun. Yeah, because for people that don't know, like that's the one thing for like league people that know everything about the items, they don't do the same thing. People yeah. like me. And Morello's in this game. Yeah, people like you. 
like just makes your AOE do on um, any like spell damage do percentage health and then on Garen every tick is just like your front line just shredding as he spins their front line for like max health per tick and it's a uh, pog champ and I also finished on a huge win so sorcerers in TFT yep. double any ability uh, power when yep. you've got mm. uh, six of them and I had a rank three Katarina yeah right and I got mm. double mana items on her. And I just, I, I had a Beyblade. Mm. It's like, the long story short is I had like you twice like as strong Beyblade. One shot everyone. Popping off. Yeah. It was like, you know, those script of Katarinas that we don't like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had one of them. Yeah. She was just, she was going bonkers. Pulse, are you a auto battler guy? Honestly, I never really got into it. I know that Rusty tried to get me into it, but I only had the Chinese Dota client. So I was content, like, I didn't know what any of the champions did, and also I didn't read Chinese. So I was <laughs> like, this is just a bad experience all around. So <laughs> <I'm just laughs> really, Everything really went well. <laughs> yeah. Rusty? Yeah, I love it. I think it's great. I've enjoyed it, but I am in a, I would say, not as extreme a stance, but still a similar stance to certain other people on the couch who have called themselves snobs. Um, no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there was one game. I had double Spear of Shojin Kennen. And for those who don't know, Spear of Shojin means dealing damage and having extra mana. So, like, you'll start with your ultimate, you do damage with it, and you'll get your ultimate back quicker. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. imagine Kennen, who just ults and then has enough mana to ult again. It's yeah. off cooldown, yeah. 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 So well, there amazing. is no cooldowns in it. Yeah. So, this is one of the big dif differences, also on the list. There's no cooldowns in no. this game. As soon as you have mana, you ult. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, crazy. I like that. I That's yeah. crazy. I think that's great. Oh like, my god! It's like blowing his mind, but I don't have a comparison, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's but how also, it works. But also, I don't because to me, cooldowns are like you've only got one ability. Like cooldowns are to manage the fact that like you've got one really strong ability uh, in you know, like if you're talking ultimate, about like in like League of League, Legends, yeah. Yeah, 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 and then you've got multiple abilities, so you mm. can't just be popping the really strong one as long as you have the mana. Whereas this, you only have the one thing that you can really do. So mm. as soon as you've got the mana for it, it's like, well, you're not using it for anything else. But some are so strong and you get your ultimate, like you get mana yeah. by dealing damage. Like, I, imagine had, imagine you're you're this. I played against, no, Kindred. I played True. against Spear of Shojin Kindred mm. and it just didn't go away. But she keeps you alive as well, right? Yeah. Because it like works like Kindred ulti. Yeah. <laughs> if Kindred like, is just perma ult, if you give Kindred, Kindred the wrong collection of items, does she just like stalemate the game? I don't if it's know. a melee versus Kindred and she's just ulting Infinitely. She, she just altered like four times and I <laughs> she lost. Just can't and I was die. like, because I play Rangers. Yeah, and I was okay, just okay, like, yeah, yeah. this sucks. I'm excited for to be able to actually do this in some Nick Plays League. Like, yeah. we can put this as like a second MPL game because mm. then we can be, because I feel like there's a lot of egos in this room. Ah, because no, once, we're, not. once we're on other sides <laughs> of, like, w right now we're all working together. What I will say friends. is, for those and when we go head to head, like, the real Jake comes out. I know, I think, I, as far as I'm concerned, and you know, these guys have played with me before. I would say, honourable citizen during <laughs> TFT. Not on camera. I would There's say, no way that's happening on in camera. In TFT. <laughs> yeah. oh. I would say, oh. it, it, some qualities that I'd use to describe myself in the yeah, Discord. Okay. Incredibly polite. Yeah. Like, very, very encouraging to other people that I'm playing with and against. Uh, and all around, just a great person. Just I a think, good person to be around. I think the words, as I forget who you were talking to, but the words after you said something of note were, oh, I really hate when they don't like fight back when you shit talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it less fun. So yeah, no, it was Richard Chow. Because yeah. what happened was everyone was hanging shit on me. So anytime anyone lost to me, because yep. I came in. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And like, I was like, you know, th I think there could be some improvements. And everyone's like, you just are saying that because you're shit at the game. And I was like, all right, whatever. So then as soon as I beat someone, I was like, I reckon an uninstall is worthwhile <laughs> if I'm beating you. Yeah, good. And then I tried it with Richard Chow, who, for those that don't know, Richard Chow is our lovely producer. Yep. And he just went, yeah, I'm not very good yet. And I went, <laughs> oh, Richard, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I like, wish I could hug you right now. Yeah, it's like you punched a kitten. <laughs> He's a very nice boy, Richard. Uh, so if you're playing Teamfight Tactics, let us know. Uh, we'll be hitting it up in some MPL uh, pretty soon. I'm excited about it. I love all these kinds oh, of games. It's such so. a great genre of game. Totally. And it's, it has a lot of potential. It's exciting to have a new genre of games as well uh, that doesn't involve uh, reaction time, which is good for me. Uh, now, or next aim. game. Yes. Or aim. Big, big one. Reaction big time one. or aim. Uh, Mammoth versus Order. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we get... Team fight tactic. I just... <laughs> I really feel like the game's got some legs. Uh, I mean, Mammoth very on a good. very good streak yes. right now. Take it. 
Yeah. Oh, that's all you were saying? Yeah. Well, no, well, like, I was going to continue, yeah, but, but then, then you came off like, with the AFL you or little... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Mammoth on a streak right now, and Order, uh, you know, they're just finding their way. I mean, this happened last split, and you ended up in the gauntlet, so it's probably all fine. Yeah, it happened in the middle of the split, though, right? And the big thing for me is, like, taking a look at strength of schedule, like, this is a tough week for Order. They have Mammoth and Chiefs, and then they play Bombers as well. So it's like, Order have lost the I easy know, we've already played games. Bombers. We beat oh, Bombers. I, I see, no, that's true. That is, that is true. It was your first game of the split, right? But, that, yeah. but that's going into, like, the second yeah. thing. So yeah. this is another one of those situations where you... If you look at the league in terms of, like, round robins, mm -hmm. order is just kind of crap in the bed in one of these round huh. robins. It happened last season, and this is not a good start. You know, if you want to be Mr. Negative over there, Mammoth right now, they're a fantastic <laughs> team. I think team. that yeah. they've finally put it all together. Like, this is a team that we expected to see when they first yes. made this roster. Mm -hmm. Fudge only makes them more dangerous. The fact that they're still willing to use Topoon, who mm -hmm. I think is playing this game, is really, really impressive for me. Mm -hmm. And order right now... Look terrible. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. This will be an exciting game. Uh, Mammoth know they're looking good, though, and they have made this quick video before we head into the McDonald's Champs Select. I think that there's a lot more middle-of-the-pack teams than there are, you know, bottom and top. So since we're 3A right now, I just we just want to prove that, you know, we're not just going to maybe lose to one of the middle-of-the-pack or lower-tier teams. I still don't think there's a big gap between us, Bombers and Chiefs. I still think, especially in best of ones, either team can take it. We're not too, you know, complacent. We're not thinking that we're just going to beat them every week, but uh, it does feel good to finally see results that we couldn't really translate on stage last split. I mean, now, still undefeated, 4-0. and zero. Yeah. I mean, looking at Mammoth, is this a team that just goes undefeated through the entire split? It's possible. I mean, things we know about Mammoth, they're an emotional team. They've said it themselves after losses, after wins, you know, during the first split that they're emotional. So streaks can happen with a team that mm -hmm. is emotional. And right now, it's a very positive streak. They've got the wins. They've got the momentum. And Babip in that video says he doesn't want to get complacent when playing any team. And, you know, if they're able to not just think that, but actually do that, not be complacent when playing against the last place team, then yes, I genuinely think, you know, they're a super team that could stay undefeated the entire split. They've got that potential there, but still, we don't know. And what we do know, and it is something that Mammoth have said themselves, Pulse, is that everyone's good now. There is no free wins. Sure. And so there's always a time where your opponents play up. And Order is the type of team that are just so hard to predict. Will they play up? Will they play down? They've had a rough start, but they finished second in spring. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Sure, tough week ahead of them as well as we get into the Maccas champion select. But there really can be something sad for a team that goes undefeated and then just kind of not learning anything because they just win through like the mechanics or just how good the team is, you know, because they just don't learn from and defeats because there aren't any, right? You know, there've been a lot of historic teams who have just won everything in the league and then it gets a crunch time for an international or whatever. And yeah. it's just like, well, we have no idea what it is like to play against a team who is equal or better than us. There are still the G2s of the world though. You know, yeah. where you can just win and just keep winning. Apparently you just go faster and faster as you win better and better. And for me, it's about mindset, about hunger, you know, motivations yeah. and what it is exactly you're looking for. And I think for Mammoth, losing in the first split in the way they did would hurt them. And they want to come in and not just prove a point, but really hit it home. And I think that actually does help a lot. Well, we've got some bands coming through. We said Juani, Lux, and Irelia coming through for Mammoth and Order responding with Natrox. And there's the Sona we were looking for from that first game. And we've taken off the table here on red side. Oddly missing, wasn't it? Just skilling yeah. the stats of Sona. Strong champion outright, but lots of preferences going in other directions there for both teams in the first game. But rightly so, where she deserves to be on the bench. There's always going to be some anomalies to that appearance rate. Yumi, of course, are going to uh, maintain almost 100% there as well as she takes another ban here from Order. We're now looking towards that third pick from Mammoth. Which does actually still leave open the Zaya and the Rakan as two yeah. very strong picks, which also leaves open the Karma. And I think this is where we're going to start to see a little bit more of the patch 9.12 meta that we have seen in some other regions around the world. Karma's being pretty much perma-banned in Korea, as an example. So, strong champion can be flexed into multiple roles. And as far as first picks go, I don't think you get many better choices than that of the Karma on this patch. Of course, yeah. Patch 9.12 had some changes, had some buffs. Uh, I saw on Twitter, obviously, this was a, was a spotlight for me. It was like, is Tank Karma coming back? Yes or no? Um, but we'll, we'll see That's if that picks up. Uh, yeah, so it will be another Nico pickup here from Order. And Pershing looking towards another Zaya pickup as hey. well. Hello. How's it going? Uh, Bye. Yeah. 
I'll see you later. Uh, yeah, just waiting on this one. 10 seconds left on the timer. Geez, you're lucky we weren't turned around looking at the TV. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's not really a view that viewers get a lot, is it? Or I'll be the back might, of our heads. Maybe just the back just doesn't exist, right? You wouldn't know. <laughs> Do, are we wearing pants? <laughs> yeah. Do we have? And this is a how the audience finds out that we're, we're AIs, right? We only have <laughs> top, the top half of ourselves and the front, and that's it. Um, yeah, so it was the Zyra in the end. Mammoth over to them. Five seconds left. We're not wearing pants, just in case anyone was running. Yeah, yeah, just to clarify. And taking Rakan away from that duo there. So yeah. we won't be able to get that there for Auto, and it will be the Lucian. Similarly to what we mentioned in the last draft, however, is you know the first two picks here from Auto matched that of AV. Is like, do you take away the Rakan from the Zayu? Do you split up the duo? And you know, most people would have the opinion that Zaya is the strong of the stronger of the two, and Rakan is only really as good when Zaya is around. So Order now get the chance to say, what can we do to counter this? What is it that we do that we think is strong? They're going to go towards the Braum. That's just the choice that they have given. And you know, Zaya Braum does work hand yeah. in hand. But Lucian Rakan actually still a fairly strong duo. Of course, there is other options. I mean, Rakan has had his own share of nerfs over the last you know, 10 or so patches, right? So as a standalone champion, definitely weaker. But obviously has massive playmaking potential with the ultimate and the knockup combo. Uh, Olaf, we're going to get a ban out here by Order. Looking towards the junglers right here. Mm. Olaf taken off the board means that they're not probably looking towards something like the Jarvan pick, but when you look towards Spook's champion pool with a Braum locked in, you know, Spooks is one of those people that he can play the meta champions, he could also whip out a Xin Zhao anytime yeah. he wants. This wouldn't be a bad game for it so far. Yeah, a lot of uh, Xin Zhaoable targets on this side of Mammoth so far. A lot of mobility, however, so maybe not the most ideal game for it. You, you really what, just yeah. need that one opportunity to audacious charge and yep. you know, they're going to bite it. Lee Sin also not a horrible choice. Skarna taken off the board. Rek'Sai also gone. Nocturne is also a champion we saw last game. I would expect more of the Lee Sin route to be seen here. And it's just a lot of junglers being taken off the board of Skarna and Rek'Sai now gone, with neither jungler being picked up by uh, either side. And you know, one thing of note, you shouldn't see it this game, but Babip is the Nidalee player, you know? He's one of the few people that can whip out the crazy hard farm style champions, something that you can see from him at any time. So when you go towards this jungle bands and you, you throw the gauntlet down, four of them gone in this game, you're comfortable if you're Babip saying, well, let's just go crazy, shall we? I'll match yeah. it. Yeah, I'm thinking of Lee Sin, Jarvan as well. Pick up here from Border. Most likely going into the jungle, can also solo lane. Yeah, so I mentioned before that they may not look at Jarvan given the Olaf ban, but for that split second, I forgot how strong Olaf Karma is. Mm -hmm. It is a duo that we are seeing around the world as well. So Olaf Karma has been removed as a duo. And I would like to see where they go now in response, Mammoth. We mentioned the Zin Zhao for Order. Well, Karma Zin Zhao is actually not that bad for the opposing side of Mammoth here as well, if they wanted that. Yeah, as you also said, potential for farming junglers as well to come in for Mammoth. Jarvan can get up in their face though. This would be an interesting pick coming through. That would be just a little bit peculiar. Just a little bit. But we just have uh, Zulina in the mid lane last game, so I'm all for it. Oh, okay. We'll be Trundle in the end. Bit of a duelist into the jungle here for Mammoth. And Azir going to the mid lane, Emperor of the Sands. You know, one of the few combos that you look at with Trundle and you say is strong is the Thresh, something that has pick, you know, something that is very good in the mid game. This current Trundle pick into the Jarvan isn't something that is seen as the most standard matchup. And for me, I look at it and I say Barbie wants one of his comfortable champions. It can control Summoner's Rift pretty well. Does actually aid in a pick composition decently. You know, just the pillar can be a game changer. And we've seen the Zoe actually locked in here for order. You know, one of Swiffer's better champions for certain, but a champion that's also dropped off the face of the earth almost yeah. until this game. Which is hilarious because Zoe, you know, was was basically like the Yumi, the Sona, you know, back in the day where it was just like every single game there would be either a pick or a ban of Zoe. And it's still like, you know, the big Zoe players around the world, but yeah, going to be finding itself in this game. I do hear that Azir does rather well into Zoe as well in the War of Attrition into the mid lane. There's a lot of, you know, I would say most Zoe matchups are opponent favored until Zoe gets something that wins the lane. Mm -hmm. you know, right now, when you're contrasting them, we can see this, of course, it's Teleport versus Ignite. No cleanse for Triple does actually make the lane a little bit harder. Swiffer may find himself a redemption and he wins lane. 
You know, yeah. like he's got the kill threat with the ignite. He's got the spell thieves on the W. We'll see where he chooses to go with it all as well. He's also got the hard ganking jungler in Spooks, and that is a big place that you'll have to look towards as well. Babbit can gank, can actually pretty successfully gank, yeah. as we need to note that it is the Karma going top lane. Yes, yeah, Karma top lane right here. Give me the tank Karma. Let's make it happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I really do like Trunnel into uh, ganking a Zoe lane, to be honest, because, I mean, portal jump, you, you know exactly where she's going to be, right? So, can put a spanner in the works. How does he get a chance to take a look at the full composition right here? So pretty strong overall from order, much more standard in terms of draft with champions. We've spoken about the Zoe. Mm -hmm. Mammoth have gone for a whole lot of supports and I would say a lot more reliance on their two carries in the team being triple and king. All right, just a couple moments from getting into game right here. And with us, we do have the uh, coach of order. Gonna be two cheers, how are you going? I'm good, hello. Hey mate. <laughs> How are you? What do you think of our draft? What do I think of your draft? What do you, what think? Do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> I like your draft. I was curious at first. I saw the uh, the Olaf ban with Jarvan yeah. locked in. Usually Jarvan's good in the Olaf. But yep. my guess while we're talking about draft is that Karma Olaf just too scary. Yes. Also, um, I think both teams were like uh, pinching jungle pool. And we had our, because we're red side, we get to choose first. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised that they left up Jarvan because it was probably the best one up available. We didn't really think they would have a solid answer outside of something cheesy like Nocturne, Trundle, Evelyn even. Um, so um, they probably just went to comfort on the Trundle pick. And along that line as well though, Chu, is something that has made me, I've noticed this just through scrimming as well, is that the Jarvan priority seems to be more so oceanic than anywhere else in the world. Yeah, um, it's just an easy go tool. Um, go -tool. Like, uh, we love to team fight, um, and Jarvan's probably like the easiest, just like press and click engage champion in the game, especially when um, flashes are down. So, um, especially into a champion like Karma, because Karma has such priority at the moment in this meta, it just means that Jarvan um, in jungle is very good at punishing those kinds of immobile champions. Fair. I want to shift gears just a little because uh, obviously a bit of a shaky start, one might say, to the start of the split of for you. Um, and also this week just being very difficult facing Mammoth today in a tough game tomorrow. What are your thoughts about you know the start of the split and what this means for you guys moving into you know the first round Robin? Yeah, this is actually the first time anyone's actually asked me. Um, about that? I mean, don't uh, worry, no one's watching, so just tell me what you think. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> um, yeah, like, starting one and three, especially when we were versing Diwals and Legacy, arguably, like, two of the bottom tier teams. Mm -hmm. um, but we definitely had some setbacks um, in regards to, like, uh, some people like some people on the team had, like, injuries. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, well, like, a lot of things went wrong in the earlier weeks. So we've definitely had to get our footing um, in order, especially after losing to, like, two of those teams. But um, I think we've started to, like, get moving, and hopefully we can catch up with teams as we're heading into week three. I've heard this sentiment as well, Chujus, and I'm curious of your thoughts on it, because it seems like universally now there is no bottom of the table. It's mm. just, like, a giant middle of the pack. Do you feel the same way in terms of team skill? Yeah, like, with um, the imports and, like, the new uh, the changes to rosters, I think this season is very competitive. Um, Die Wolves, who didn't really win many games in split one and now like very much like they in that last game they contested AV very well um, so every team has to take this split extremely seriously and it's and it's actually just really fun like being a part of it sure well thank you very much for joining us Choo Choo's we're gonna get into the game now and uh, yeah we'll catch you later thank you always a pleasure to talk to Mr. Choo's what you may not know for some of the newer viewers is that he's an OG pro player as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of them crop up in uh, coaching roles here and there, but chooses one of the few that is really stuck and I mean, seems to have, Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. And seems to have done some amazing work with Order, especially in that first split. A very hard worker. It's always good to see him get those results. But so far, of course, in this split, the results not quite where they need them to be. Yeah. It's always interesting, you know, as, as someone who is always and always will be a caster, right? Who's, who's never really delved into that, just to see people transition through these different roles and just kind of float around you in different ways. It's uh, pretty cool. A lot of learning about what is it you're passionate about, because we all like the game, you know. I know it translates. Yeah. Is it coaching? What is it exactly that seems to keep your eye for a career possibility? But nevertheless, he has found himself as a coach, and Order have found themselves with a pretty strong engage tool in the Jarvan, like mentioned, and overall, lots of good team fighting capabilities that was a there. sick segue, Rusty. Hell yeah. Uh, 
Yep, Spook's gonna find himself a single sad Krug in the top side of the map. Has been counter jungle there by Babip, who now goes back to base. And uh, yeah, not really too much of an explosive start to the game. We're about to be getting uh, level sixes soon TM. Of course, ganking jungle on the side of order, so I do expect that to come into, uh, into effect probably in the next 30 to 45 seconds, given that uh, the first item and the brown yep. bags have been picked up here. And while we were loading into the game, it did look like it was a teleport for Triple. It is actually the cleanse. So yes. he did switch over with the last second. So thankfully, he equalizes one of the concerns we had coming into this as to how the lane would pan out. But in contrast to that, Spooks had the first move on him and forced some early potions, which does still give control of the lane. You would expect much more so to that of Swiffer. And speaking of... Yeah, the paddle starts, gonna be hit onto triple. Ignite comes down as well, forcing the flash. Instant cleanse, gonna be a little bit drowsy. Oh, and that's gonna be first blood out from Swiffer. Yeah, not just drowsy, put to sleep this time forever. Unfortunately, triple goes down, good moves. And again, you speak about the little details, the potion advantage used in mid. Swiffer has the ignite and he knows that triple can't cleanse that while he holds the bubble and gets the move speed for his spell thieves. And suddenly that kill is just as free as you'd like for order with very good setup. And it was first time, first, first try and first success coming out from Order. So we were talking about this matchup in Champion Sector. It's like, well, you know, Triple can definitely go even and is likely to, unless it's a, a gang course with just turning it hundreds, or his zero to 100 in the second, which is exactly what happened there. And, you know, rule of thumb for people at home that haven't seen too many of ears running around, usually it's just the one trick that comes in and smacks people. One of the best ways to gank them in terms of timing is wait for his ear to use his Q. They will always try and push the Q forward to harass or to clear the wave as fast as possible. And in that moment, they can't dash away mm -hmm. because now their dash is tiny. And that was exactly the moment that Order chose to go in that gank. And it's something that gives them the kill where think about the distance that Triple could have covered yep. if he had the Q and the dash up. When the most vulnerable and especially pre six as well without the Emperor's Divide because that can definitely mess up someone like Jarvan. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone with a dash, actually. So Who's perfect Jarvan time. Ultimate? Sorry? Who wins in a battle between Java and Alt and Azir? I'm pretty sure Azir. Uh, Dream is just going to get detonated into the bottom lane by King. Yeah, damn. Braum's over. Got him. Clear and vision. Dream's by himself. Just caught out. No flashes used from the side of Mammoth at all. Just a clean kill. And look at the wave that he's missing. He has to teleport. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, that's just a necessity right there. That's like two and a half waves stacked up. And it gives plenty of time for uh, Destiny to go elsewhere. And that was just a, a great pick. I mean, from full. Yeah, easy. Just uses Lucian as the springboard, able to dash forwards. And, you know, one of these 2v2s that you don't often consider in terms of strength. Lucian can yeah. dash. Rakan doesn't need the Zaya extra distance then. You can just go forwards with it. It's a good lane. We we're talking about, uh, you know, the Zaya maybe being the more desirable, more preferable pick over Rakan. But it doesn't mean he's useless. Can definitely still be aggressive, especially in the Lucian lane. Yeah, Lucian always makes lanes a lot stronger. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that our bombers would be very keenly aware of. Lucian Bomb. Every game. Lucian Bomb. Lucian Bomb. Uh, Babip moving into the bottom side. Have control ward, so they know that uh, he can at least move up into this first brush. But Jake is actually playing this quite defensively on the back side. It's going to be a dash forwards knock up once again onto the Zaya. No flash right there as well. Taking him down with the smite. It's going to be the kill over teleport, to Destiny. That's but late. double teleports coming into the bottom lane. And he actually completes it, Tally. Jumps back in, gets the stun. Ooh. Spooks also joining the party, so is Swiffer, but hostilities are going to die down. Tally's a lucky man. The fact that you can't cancel teleports anymore made that a very spicy situation for the Nico as he was late to the teleport, late to the play, and now has to flash and ult after using that teleport. As we look mid once again. Yeah, I was a little shocked he committed to it. That was a real nice drowsy. That would have hurt if that had connected. Also Jarvan in the wings as well. Doesn't have the flash, but does have the cataclysm. Through a small ability to uh, look for the dive here. Redemption. Uh. The fact that that's uh, still possible is... Uh, you know, the, okay, so the getting redemptions kind of annoying. I'm sure we can all agree on that. Kind of. The fact that it's like from mid lane, you can use it bot lane. Like the distance on it is that yeah. high to activate. That's what gets me. There's also the potential to use where if you get it very early on, uh, you can just one shot the initial Yeah, wave. it hits minions. Yeah, because it's uh, I think 400 base crew damage. Yeah. yeah. And we first dragon over to order here. 
could be Mountain, so it'd be a, big, a bit of a big deal later on. But uh, next round, Little Infernal feels like we're doing pretty well with the Infernal good, today. Good pick up against the green, though, yeah. from Order. When you think about the state of bottom lane, more kills going True. over. The second death from Dream didn't have the teleport. But they're able to lock down that dragon, so you take those, as, especially from a trundle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know the big thing that I think we're going to continue to see is the springboarding. I think it's very important that you watch the way King and Destiny are playing that lane out. Now that Dream is six, he'll have to ult any time that Rakan goes forwards. And this is where the, because people compare Zarya and Rakan all the time, right? Like, who's the more important of the two? Zarya pretty much always beats Rakan, but it's about what can Rakan do to the team that makes him stronger. Because think about the champions. Rakan goes forwards, uses everything. Zarya kites backwards by design. Mm -hmm. There's just, you can't dash away, you can't dash forwards. There's feathers everywhere that'll lock you down from melee range. So, In that scenario, you usually be like, well, it's better to be Zarya. But when there's a Lucian murdering you, it's a little bit harder. Yeah, puts a little bit of uh, ambiguity into that one. Yeah, 75 gold. Meanwhile, Babip on the top side, taking this Herald. Spooks. Gonna spot this one out though, this guy's Bloom. Looks like uh, there is a defense coming in here from Triple. Yeah, Spooks just contest. have everything. The there Destiny is... Classic right now though, when you look at the minimap, he's coming up to mid lane straight away. Just by himself, just going for a bit of a roam. I mean, there's still a potential for a steal here. King has teleport, I don't Flag think Drag and a flash this. in the pit. Okay, bit of a softball right there, but Jake comes into the top side. It's gonna be a real nice speed up there from Karma and there's kind of a, a bit of hesitation there from Order. Wanted the uh, Brom to be close before really initiating anything. Went to the top side, didn't get anything done. Yeah, a little bit harder there for Order to contest the play. With how fast the Rakan moves is always yeah. going to be a feature. Just able to get there and contribute map presence, not necessarily damage to the objective. And because Babbitt was able to hit it solo to kick it off for a while before Order really could react, did mean a great deal. So they just lock it down. No chance of a contest from Order, though it felt like they were posturing and they were hunting. Mm -hmm. And it's really the difference between wanting to even go in for the potential of smite still, because even that doesn't matter unless you can secure the area. Mm -hmm. So, or they're just choosing not to pull the trigger. That being said, they are moving into the bottom side, just jungle support duo. Trying to get something in return, teleport into the bottom lane here by King. And uh, some deep vision, actually a lot of deep vision coming in from Order in this uh, It'll start be clear, though, you would expect. Babip also having control wards, so that's one of them immediately taken off. And two of the three wards used by Jake to control that area, so then they get half control of the bottom red side quadrant. Mammoth, Mammoth able to weather any kind of plays that you would expect from Order, and you can see the hover from Babip, just in case. You know, if a team is setting up vision in your red side quadrant, then it feels like maybe they're trying to get some freedom to move to roam or, you know, dive bottom because bots pushed. But all of Mammoth group together and good team play prevent that completely. Yeah, the gang squad just kind of goes through the river and clears out all of the walls that Order just plays down. And Dragon is spawning in two minutes. So it's around the time when you start to expect people to start prepping for wards and wards before the wards. Bottom lane, about even in farm. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, slight advance to the Zoe plus the kill. Top lane, we haven't really seen anything from top lane apart from the one time they uh, had a cameo at the, uh, at the Rip Herald. Yeah, Tally not getting punished without his flash. So it's about to be up very shortly. And I wouldn't expect a whole lot from a control mage Nico that just focuses on wave clear and building her first glacial augment items and a karma who is a karma. What you would look for is perhaps the the little tactical nuke that karma drops once Ludens yep. is completed. If that's the build that Topoon's going towards, could still be the GLP. Yeah, Q Max here. And uh, of course, it still hurts by itself especially when mantrid. Yeah, and a lot of Karmas will try and hit you through the minion wave. So you want to mm -hmm. try and just like get the AoE from the Q that hits on a minion to hit you. That's how they tend to win the lanes. Very hard against the Nico with range though to be able to yeah. even do that. You on the bottom side, got the Herald ready to charge. Triple's on his way to the bottom lane as well. Spook's here for a defense, but Swiffer is very much behind the play. That being said, the minion wave is cleared out very efficiently here by order, so it will not be the tower going down, just completing. But it's times like this, and always bringing it back to the last game when you think of Dials placing the Herald down, you would have said it's, it's probably handy to put that mid. With all of the, uh, the priority the bot lane has, you could have just summoned it mid with bot moving up river. Yeah. But instead they placed it bot, which felt like an attempt to break the turret to unleash their bottom lane on the map instead. Which is valid when you've got a 101 item spike Lucian. But they don't get the turret. Zai is able to hold it. However, forced to base yeah. means the turret will fall eventually. 
Ouch. I mean, at a point, there is some nitpicking to it. Oh, man, just one Palosar away from a death, really, in this mid lane. Because uh, there's not a lot of wrong answers for Mammoth right now with uh, how that all went. That being said, the tower didn't die. An order do a lot of damage right now to this objective. I hope you just take this one away before anyone gets in range here by Mammoth. And indeed, that is the case. Actually sticking around for a hot second, see if they can just find something. Yeah, triple so. berry chunked hurts that type of contest for them. Yes. Teleport was actually used by Topu. I think he was detected, but he's positioning like he wasn't, just in case someone wants to defend this. And this is the trade order. They actually get priority in mid lane. They get the push because Triple was chunked, and the rest of Mammoth have left him to his own devices. So they actually trade turrets, and I would say this is a really good trade from Order. Oh yeah. Because they get the mid tower, which just unlocks so much map control. And the gold isn't even different, they're even. Yeah, that was a big win, and now exactly, we're just looking at map pressure. We can take a look at the mid lane, that's where a big differential is between the mid laners at the very least, but you see the rest of the board is pretty even. It's really just the bottom lane that has the biggest disparity between Mammoth and Order, so... Yeah, I mean, that's where you see, like, the knock-on effect, right? Um, where you don't place the Herald mid lane, you don't have any pressure right there. Swiffer gets to do whatever he wants, now he's just invading the jungle. Um, and this is the part of the game where a Zoe who has done well in the laning phase, got herself a kill, has the Ludens... Gets spooky. Start, exactly, you know, starts to really put down the pressure around the mid-game. Feels like I'm just watching game one all over again, you know? It's getting real spooky. We'll see how the Zoe goes. Of course, Swiffer is a very good Zoe player, but you have to say on the opposite side, King on Lucian is good. Destiny on an engaged support, very important. For Mammoth, just full stop. Means a great deal when he has an engaged champion. Last split, people were picking on Mammoth by just banning all of the tank supports and trying to force him onto a mage, and they were finding success with that. But just too hard to ban. Focus on supports now with all the flex picks that are up. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Got a couple lane swaps going through now. Losing into the top side. Spook's still hovering. We haven't seen a handful of uh, really aggressive plays from him, but they did count when he uh, went for them. Triple being spotted in the mid lane. Babif is going to be here, spotted out by Spooks, however. Flag drag, knock up into the slowdown. Half health, Swiffer looking to jump over the wall with this one. That's going to be him blowing up the Trono over the wall. Going to be forcing the flash oh. though from Spooks. How much damage is this going to do as he jumps over the wall? The portal jump, oh, almost oh. all of his HP, King! Needs to take a trip back to base. That was, what, 90% of his health, I'm going to say? Yeah, he just gets obliterated, and now he has to go back. There's no real tower in mid lane, however, so just good damage. And you got know, a Babip caught unaware, Spooks being helicopter parent of the century for Swiffer in the mid lane. Just sits there and waits and bides his time, and along comes a Troll King. So I mean, easy. That is so dangerous now, just as a show of strength. The fact that it's 90% of your AD carries HP. It means if he takes any poke whatsoever, <laughs> he's in kill range. So I, sh I didn't think this through, but he really is a helicopter parent, isn't he? Who? Spooks. Oh, yeah. It's just every I mean, time you pan to Zoe, there's Spooks in a bush <laughs> next to it. It's all about just uh, making sure that your kid does well, you just know? Just complaining about really the curriculum. Wanna, yeah. Shape their, shape their future. And I, I mean, to be honest, 2 zero, zero, you can't fault Spooks for being a helicopter parent. I can fault helicopter parents, just not Spooks. That's fair. I was watching Crazy Witch Asians uh, on the <laughs> flight over here. It's actually the first time I watched that. I surprisingly watched, watched it earlier. It's good. It's good. Represent representation matters, folks. Uh, <laughs> it's a good film. Would recommend. Uh, there comes the Spookies. Oh, just oh wow. Spy past them. Destiny scores a goal. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 what, I think one locked onto the recall and one locked onto uh, yeah. King, who was already forward in front of him. I think it actually just acquires the closest target right, of activation right. and destiny, like. And then doesn't change. Slips through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it should, really. You feel like that would be the case. I, I believe that they detonate before they hit the target and you have to be on top of it, they're still slow. But, uh, yeah. What? Uh oh. Here comes the pain. Someone's gonna have to body oh. block. It's gonna be a minion. <laughs> Get down, Mr. President. I think Jake might have aggroed a minion there. I'm not too sure. Yeah, Either yeah. way, uh, we've happened oh, again. Oh, Spooks, though. Double knock coming through. Topoon having to kite away. But Babip gets blown up again right here. Destiny kiting away. And the rest of the team just running with the tail between their legs right now. But Order really starting to turn up the heat. You speak about the need of engage for Order, something that Choo Choo's highlighted on Jarvan. And that's absolutely the case here. You know, he's always seemingly the one that's dictating when are we fighting, where are we fighting as well. And Spooks... And the infamous just sit in a bush. Oof. 
style of play is working wonders for them as they continue to find picks. Mammoth, the type of team that want to force a front to back. You know, the good composition for Lucian Azir putting out damage. We've already highlighted how strong those two picks will have to be with the supportive cohort and the rest of the team. At the current moment, though, they are Ooh, they're hunting. Triple. A bit feisty there in the mid lane, jumping forwards with the Conquering Sands, especially with the amount of damage that can be returned here from Order. Might have been trying to force a flash, perhaps. Yeah. You know, when you dash yeah. in melee range, you expect someone to flash away. I mean, especially holding on to that Serena Shuffle. Mm. Order in a very good but, spot here. I mean, that was the point I was going to make, right? Because we were talking about Order and how difficult this week has been, how the first couple of weeks have been for Order. And honestly, with Triple Dragons, massive gold advantage heading into the, very much the mid game at 20 minutes right here, Baron about to spawn. Uh, if they keep this up, it means so much for Order as a team and for a lineup, right? Like your, your hardest week for the foreseeable future, and this is where you start to turn it on is just the best possible outcome. Yeah, for me, the basic gist of it is if you can beat Mammoth, then your biggest problem is just consistency, not skill. And that's <laughs> yep. right now, if they lose to Mammoth, then the consistency of their losing means that it may feel like it's something else. I always think it's just consistency for order, full stop. But right now, with the 201 Zoe, with the Zoe pick at all being unexpected, and with how good they're looking through their mid jungle, not even their bot lane carrying, which was, you know, the split one, they were popping off down there, Dream and Jake. But they're still winning the map without that. Yeah. With a zero with a one two now, Zaya. I mean, at the very least, just the knowledge that you can punch above your weight, right? As Destiny is looking for the counting kick, but look at the damage coming through there by Jake alone. Spook's coming in with the all right. I resurrect it. It's a bit of follow-up damage. Swiffer over the wall, not connecting the paddle star. Oh, yeah, comes three, from the cataclysm. Has to throw out the ult there, Dream. He got given the fact, you shall not pass, but still tried to walk that way. Uh, loses all of his health for it and has to use the ultimate, but nevertheless doesn't die and has teleport. Yep. Things could be worse. Now, Spooks commits the Cardinal <laughs> Jarvan Sin of using his flag while clearing wards. That's like Lee Sin using his W to attack wards faster. Yep. You have no escape. The only way you can go then is forwards, and a Trundle Pillar very easily, of course, will lock him down after that. So good pick from Destiny and from Babip. Destiny, of course, hitting the knockout first to lock themselves down to Jarvan. Yeah, a bit of just, you know, overconfidence, and really you can just call that. But this has been a conversation of just multiple champions, right, where you prey on them when using abilities at the wrong time. I mean, that one, that one's like, you just don't need to use Flag Attract to throw wards. Um, Triple ah. just going to dodge over the wall there. And it does feel most of this game is now about vision. Order have set mm -hmm. the agenda here, and they have said that we're going to pick a bush, we're going to murder you in this bush, and yeah. you're going to come face check eventually because we know you're coming to this spot. So using their foresight, using their vision control to bring Mammoth to them. But that last little skirmish there where Spooks dies was about Order moving forwards, clearing the vision first. So if Mammoth are there, they can answer. But if Order are already set up, it is so scary to face check any of Order's comp. I mean, just get used to this setting. Mid lane, Baron. Because this is what we're going to be seeing for a good long while. Hello. How's it going? Helicopter has been found. <laughs> Acquired. Oh, it can't oh. move. The, well, yeah, basically the perfect pin against the wall. You could almost argue this is a, a comp that does that. Azir can pin people against walls. Uh, Trundle as well. Jarvan True. technically. Now where they are standing is very control warded. So don't worry. Order cannot be seen. The knowledge has been assumed, though, as they are clearing Baron Vision here, Mammoth. And this is where the plus train will continue, like you highlighted. Yeah, though, there are definitely tools on both sides. And you look towards a Zoe in this situation as well, someone who can poke very efficiently and very safely. Um, yeah. It just takes one paddle star on a squishy member, of which there are many on Mammoth, which could swing either a fight, a push, or a Baron. And you know, there is one thing. There's only two bushes on Summoner's Rift that aren't attached to terrain basically, and that is, you know, Zoe loves people sitting in bushes because it's next to terrain, loves being able to use it herself, utilize that area, and Spooks is sitting in a bush. Now the news, water is wet. <laughs> yep. They have complete vision control, though. They do indeed. And this is the point where Mammoth Star have to, uh, so pushing forward, look for those the thing is, catches and vision. What's interesting about this is Triple can step up here and actually does get away with it because Order's vision is in the river, not past the river. Now that Triple has stepped past the river, however, 
and the rest of Mountain show themselves in the mid lane. They completely split up. Good flash from Destiny. Dodge with the damage out there. Jake blocking the culling as that comes through. The bit trying to get oh. towards Oh, Clipper. Swiffer, a core tap, one versus one against Triple. Has the Ignite running. Going to be the stun down onto the bit. He's going to fall as well. Destiny trying to back this one up, but the flash forward from Tally. Not going to get the damage through. And it's a one for one trade. Surprisingly, one for one. Lots of low health bars across all of the teams here. Triple has to go back to base, use the cleanse to get rid of the Ignite, so he's able to survive. Dream very low, but still has a teleport. So a little bit of advantage perhaps given over to Order and Numbers, but Mammoth have map control first, as their numbers are still present. Mammoth off the back of this play will uh, actually get the inner track Order towards wants this. this Infernal. I mean, Triple Infernals, man. Big deal. Tally coming in right there with Spooks. Is out a couple warning shots, but in the end, Mammoth will secure this one. Jake, does he want to commit to the play though? Because he may catch out Tarpoon. Not the case. Looks like this will die down if yeah, King doesn't uh, continue to try and hit that ward. Just waiting for numbers, it felt like order. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get in there, but they were pushed away. Dream caught. Uh oh, Jake pushing forward, trying to just protect Dream right now, but there's all of Mammoth right here. Jake is going to pay for Dream's mistake. Swiffer. Backing up his AD carry, looks like the same thing might just happen once again. Throws out the ultimate dream to protect himself. And that was way too much for what was a single Raptor. And once again, the battle for Vision starts to become the undoing of a team here. This was Order this time around, who find Dream Court. Jake dying for him as well, just clearing control wards. Moves up to Raptors with what he thought was Vision control. But mm -hmm. how that comes to hurt. Now Mammoth, they are hunting. On the offense, almost into bubbles there. Bubble locks down King. Tally knocked up. Charmed as well. CC chain pops the Zonias, but I mean, there's no getting away from this one. Triple will shut him down. This Karma really is proving to be too much for the Zoe to deal with as well. Can't 1v9 a game when Karma's got such large shields. And then the Thien's Unholy Grail to give some health back, even if they get through the shielding. Mm -hmm. At this stage, they need the bubbles to hit for sure to get the poke down, but really it feels like the bubble has to be the precursor to a hard engage more than anything else now. Mammoth have really just tooth and nailed their way back into this one. Yeah. But Order still has the gold lead, still have good item spikes, sure. they're still in a comfy spot. But you can't shake the feeling that it's starting to get to the point where their time may have just already gone, right? Like you're, you're waiting for those stare downs, you're waiting for like a good paddle star to hit, and you're like, okay, now they can just pry their way into this game. But we didn't see a whole lot of them, you know, we didn't see the blue buff still there from Swiffer. Um, and we're getting to that point where it's just like, well now Karma also does a lot of damage to that Mantra Q, has the ability to disengage and engage, like there's yep. a lot of ramp up across the board here from Mammoth. And this is actually about a, I'm going to say, 10 second window for order to control vision before Tally is spotted on bot side. Doesn't have teleport, now Mammoth will press up. And you can see order, they don't want to let the vision go for free, they're trying to control the area. But with the blue trinket spotting them, and Mammoth knowing they have a numbers advantage. Flash forwards from Babip, finds the catch onto Swift at the perfect target. And that spooks over the wall, and Mammoth are just finding picks where it counts, and this will clear all of the vision now in the river that Order tried so hard for. And they'll break mid with it, most likely we shall see. Yeah, it's not really got enough help to try and defend this one, and Spooks just stepped too far forwards. What a divide coming in from Triple. And it just felt like time has run out for Order with control of the map. The second Nico shows Order stay in the bush, they're picked off. Mammoth just yeah. playing very good, very basic League of Legends with numbers advantages. They've kept Topu into the area, he's not split pushing. He's a supportive Bill Karma, of course, they want a group as five. And, you know, that's really proven too much for Order to handle. As not just one pick, but a tower, a second pick, and then a Baron to follow. And the gold has swung 4,000 just like that. And that's rough, you know, I just saw Spooks with head and hands. And you've got to feel for him because that was a pick after a pick. And it's just like, after having that momentum in the early game, very much with the precedent over to you. And it's like, okay, this is your this is your game right now. Uh, and in the space of four minutes, maybe, man, completely turned it around from these picks, the control and just being very disciplined. And now with the Baron going over to Mammoth, they, for the first time in this game, take the gold lead. And you have to give credit to Mammoth for how they've slowed the game down. You know, their ability to place the vision and not be picked by order and to start to turn all of these fights around, these skirmishes around, has been doing wonders for them and has really led them to where they are now. You know, for, for Order, two Infernals, still a big deal. Zayu with three items now completed, massive deal. They've all got control wards in their items, in their inventories to place, so they'll have a good control over the map. 
where you contrast that to their opponents, and this is where you get out the ruler. You're like, oh, there's a Corrupting Potion, there's a Doran's Blade, there's an Amplifying Tome or a Corrupting Potion that could be ward slots right now for Mammoth. So maybe Order can hold on to this Baron push from Mammoth decently well. I mean, just looking at this, it's a complete reversal in game state right now, where Tower is now being sieged out here by Mammoth, rotating from lane to lane. I mean, you really just got to give a lot of these in the towers up, to be honest, of your order, and look for your opportunity to strike. And I feel like we haven't seen a bubble hit in, you know, near on 10 minutes now. Or any bubble that has hit has resulted in a shield from Karma. Sure. Oh, hang on. Wolf Dream again, Jake stepping in. For has to even pop the ult right there, the Feather Storm to keep the Zyre alive, and that's 100% a trip back to base. With one cannon, it's not going to be pushed onto this tower, but those inner turrets are dead, and uh, top out is still there if they want it, but yeah. Dragon spawning, so the world really is Mount's Oyster at this point. They have two free turrets sitting up there in the top side as well, but first things first, Mountain Dragon. you got to lock that one down. Azir yeah. has really come online for his DPS as well. It's a hard life to be dream in this game while he's got the items. He doesn't have the ability to you know, outrange the Azir. And Azir loves short-range composition. One of the things that makes him so powerful is weathering the early game, getting the three items, and then just outranging everyone with your damage. If they get close, you ult, you stay at distance, and they just cannot touch you. And we're at that point right now. Yeah, we talked about scaling and very much Mammoth just hit that point. Looking towards someone like Dream, maybe, to uh, pull it back later. Crit AD carries, of course, always going to be a big deal, but... I mean, that's another item, at least, really, from getting to a point where you're looking at Azaya just, you know, giving an entire team um, compared to the damage threats and the mobility and the shields coming out from Mammoth, you know? Yeah. Jarvan Engage, Nico Flanks, both possible avenues yep. here for them. Killing the Azir would be priority number one, but it's so hard to do. And Lucian's also almost at four items. So really, it's just about hitting the team fight, you know? Not just the pick. Picks help. But with one carry dead, I worry that the second one may still be able to wipe. Tower going down, and really no reason for Jake to be that far out right there. Has to burn the flash to get back to the team. Good route, though, onto Bavir. King throwing that one out. Oh, there's Swiffer. Dangerous play with the Polo Drum. Gives the opportunity for Destiny to go, but this is now underneath the tower. Trades his life for the enemy jungler. Dream looking towards Bavir. Takes him down. Dead. Tally trying to back this one up, but goes in with the ultimate. Big damage onto Triple. Shutdown coming through there for Dream. King turning it around back onto the top lane. And Tarpoon wants to get out of this play. Heavy casualties coming in there for Mammoth, but they do manage to crack open the base. Yeah, it was a 3 for 2 trade though, so still putting in some work there with Order Dream. You find the fight that he's after, gets a whole lot of damage down. And they're able to push them back and save the inhib. And that's such a big deal. Baron in two minutes, we'll see this fight again. Destiny just, I feel like, kind of falls prey to himself. Trying to flash hit the W knock up, throws a Q without using W it felt like, and then was just locked in place. Tally is able to hit... And during all of the time where Tally's flashing forwards, Dream had the feathers stacked and he pulls them back. And another person goes down. So good stuff there from Dream, good from Tally. And good even from the ult from Jake. You know, to lock, say, lock yeah. the Rakan down because once the mistake was made, he was never moving. Jake was my MVP for that fight because the interrupt onto what could have been, what, a 3-4 man knockup and taunt. You montages yeah. there if you're Destiny. Yeah. So really, Jake putting a stop to that was uh, a big deal because that could have been game, to be honest. Which I like is. what I'm seeing here, though, from Order. Yeah, once again, here we are, in a bush. Going fishing. Now, yeah, they actually are. They're going fishing. One thing that I like, actually, about Vorm into Rakan that would go a little bit under the radar for changes is, you know, Rakan's now got the half a second of lockout from yep. mobility spells. If you see Rakan press R, you can just ult. And that does cancel the W. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of value in that matchup. On yeah, D1. I mean, changing something from a prediction to a reaction makes a huge deal yeah. in League of Legends. Um, yeah, nice little does there from Triple as well. Yeah, yeah this keep that Banshee's. Turret. If Triple keeps Banshees, he can harass under tower. Yep. If he loses the Banshees, he is he at risk. He just waits 45 seconds. And then has to wait. Yes. But really, big objectives uh, spawning across the map shortly. Looking towards Elder Dragon. Baron will be up as well in about two to three minutes. Um, and really, if Mammoth wants to, they can just play it slow. There's no reason for them to step up to towers. There's no reason to pick a fight. Um, no even reason to look for a pick, to be honest. You can just force order out of the base where they have zero vision and go for a clean win. Yeah, this Baron should be the place that order feel the need, you know, to push forwards for. If they get the Baron, Mammoth could actually split the map apart and start to break more towers as an open in hip top lane, as example. 
And you can see that Order have pressed really far out of their base and it's given the opening. Oh man, that's going to be the big knockout we're looking for earlier. The Chum comes through and oh, back Tally. across. Though Destiny chunked down. Spooks low on health. Tally already down. Can Spooks get out of this one? That's the question. Going to be Dream Unstoppable on the backside of that fight though. A one for two trade still in the favor of Mammoth. Yeah, teleports there for Tally. Oh, Swiffer. Swiffer. Jumps forward. He tries to make the hero play, but instead he becomes the montage material. Just taken down. Too much damage there from King. Karma shields are available. Swiffer, unfortunately for them, maybe he could have been there to harass at the Baron. You know, the threat over that wall of getting the poke off was possible, but now there's no world where they can test this. They call it a day. Swiffer with a Valiant attempt was not nearly enough. I mean, he trades what was a maybe play for a hero play, you know, like in a different universe where the stun hits, the Paddle Star hits, you get a kill onto a carry, you stop the Baron completely. Then obviously that was a fantastic play that will go down in history, right? But it wasn't. <laughs> and we always look to what could have been the maybes, but I respect it, you know, to go for those, uh, to go for those shots. Yeah, the victors write history. They do indeed. Team won the 1v1. <laughs> That's the yeah, way it yes works. Yes, they do. Uh, Baron picked up now by Mammoth and uh, now looking towards Elder Dragon, but feels like the ship has sailed. If to you be don't honest, contest order. this though, you really are up creek. Yeah. Without a paddle. 7,000 health on the Elder. No Swiffer to be seen. Tally's been spotted in mid. They so just give it up. Back it's a steal base. at best. Mammoth don't even want it. They're going to turn. I mean, the call has been made. So far out of the base right here, Swiffer might just go back down once again. Has to jump back with the portal jump. Devastating really here for Order because not just the picks right here, but from the game state they were in, a potential to topple Mammoth, the undefeated 4-0 team, to what they are right now, to getting run over within their own base. It's just demoralizing, to be honest, for Order. But that's not to say we didn't see flashes of brilliance as now Mammoth are pushing into this base. They want the end. Sieging. Spooks got to go for the Hail Mary. Jumps in, dies. Jake trying to do the same. Dream, it's on him if they can make something happen, but knocked up. Trying to go back to the base, but he's without a team. That's going to be Mammoth in a flawless 5 for 0 turnaround win. They will take it in 36 minutes. And it really felt like picking at the wound there from Mammoth. They found their target. It was a Fed Swiffer. He was doing work. But once they find that he can be killed, they look to it once again. Remember, he dies in mid. Almost identical position when trying to 1v1 the Lucian. They see him respawn. They see him walk down mid lane again. And instead of finishing the Elder Dragon, where Spooks had a really deep flank where yeah. they were collapsing in the area, they go back to where they had minions in mid, and they just find Swiffer again. And Zoe, one of the worst champions when it comes to escape tools, is just preyed upon by Mammoth. And, you know, very clean on the turnaround from Mammoth, being at a gold deficit through Vision, to be able to do these types of plays. Yeah, it was clean and it was textbook, right? It was like they knew they were on the back foot and they just did all the right things and all the right things worked. You know, there's definitely a universe in which you do the right things and you just simply can't make those plays. The team is too oppressive. They have the right picks. They have the, they're in the right place at the right time. But that wasn't the case in this one, you know? Yeah. And it felt like multiple times that Order was almost just playing a little cocky, to be honest. Like Jarvan, you know, using flag and drag to clear wards, like playing around areas where they feel like they have total control and not even respect expecting what Mammoth can do. Um, there were definitely chances, but yeah, it, it feels bad if you're order. For me, it just felt like the same trick uh, a couple of times in a row started to be read by Mammoth. You yes. know, they, it was good from order. They had a very strong start to this game, and at a certain point, Mammoth had worked it out. They placed the proper vision down, and they just prevented their opponents from having a chance. And it was at that moment that you saw why Mammoth are 5-0. Yeah, exactly. Still undefeated on that streak. Well, for now, we're going to go over to Nick Boy and Nick's boys. <laughs> Oh, you're going to fit in so well here. <laughs> uh, as Rusty said before that game, Mammoth, a very emotional team, and they are riding that emotion yeah. high. Unstoppable. Yeah, looking like it, right? Like, they said it on the couch or on the desk just then, rather. It did start off with, like, laning victories from order. Uh, but then, like, you're looking at the comp. This is the first iteration of Karma we've seen in the OPL. Mm -hmm. As of yet, super high priority, I believe, it was banned in game number one. Topoon plays that. You have, like, the Karma, Azir, Lucian. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you kind of will get to that late game stage. And I feel like for some of the individuals as well, not necessarily this game, this is, like, King back to his Lucian of old. This mm -hmm. is triple yep. big Azir play for a very long time. And it did kind of get to a point where the gas ran out and Mammoth just looked like a more cohesive team. On the flip side, Order lost this game. Mm. Yeah. Like, Mammoth did not win this game. Like, there were so many times where, like, the only way Mammoth can win this game, because they have a very short-range comp, is through neutral objectives. 
and Order had them like on lockdown. Mm. If Order just don't agree to 5v5 handshake, mm. use Zoe bubbles over walls. Like the only thing you have to be worried about is Rakan engage. And Braum shuts that down by just jumping onto the person that's engaged on and is able to ult uh, through. Mm -hmm. And then if you try and chase through, like there should be enough damage there from Order through the sustained damage of like Nico of things like Zaya that like if Order set up well, like Mm. this game shouldn't have got into the state that it did. Mm. But what happened was so many times Order members just got picked like in dominoes. And it was so frustrating to watch because like, for example, Dream would get his ultimate and his flash burn. So he would have to go back to base. Then Sam died in River as Dream was walking out of base. And then Simon died as Sam was walking out of base. Yeah. Mm. So like for just four minutes of the game, Order didn't even get to play because they had just made like really fundamental, like basic errors within the game. And then from even gold, like mm. Mammoth's comp does everything that you wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, 5v5 yeah. team fighting comp with Arden Sensor top laner. Like, mm-hmm. yes, play is like such a good uh, way to like come back into the game. But that was real, real sloppy League of Legends from Order in the mid game. Absolutely. Well, congratulations to Mammoth. I don't know who's going to take you down. We may find out this split or you'll just run it out and take out MEO. We'll find out though. (laughs) It's very exciting. Uh, We'll be back right after this break. on the back side. It's going to be a dash forwards knock up once again onto the Zaya. No flash right there as well. Taking him down with the smite. It's going to be the kill over teleport, Destiny. That's but late. double teleports coming into the bottom lane. And he actually completes it, Tally. Jumps back in, gets the sound king. Tally knocked up. Charmed as well. CT chain pops the Zonias. But I mean, there's no getting up. King throwing that one out with a Swiffer. Dangerous play with the Polo Drum. Gives the opportunity for Destiny to go, but this is an outlander underneath the tower. Trades his life for the enemy jungler. Dream looks towards the Bip, takes him down. Dead. Tally trying to back this one up, but goes in with the ultimate. Big damage onto Triple. Shutdown coming through there for Dream. King turning it around. Pressed really far out of their base and has given the opening. Oh man, that's going to be the big knockout we're looking for earlier. The charm comes through and oh, back Tally. the grass. So Destiny chunked down. Spooks low on health, Tally already down. Can Spooks get out of this one? That's the question. Gonna be Dream unstoppable on the backside of that fight though. A one for two trade still in the favor of Mammoth. Yeah, teleports there for Tally. Oh, Swiffer. Swiffer. Don't sp- At Macca's, our burgers are now hotter, juicier, and tastier. With onion-